Hey, what's poppin', everybody? Super Saiyan Santi here with the OG underscore Frizzy Frank. And we are going to be making some cakes. Yes, we are. We're making the strawberry shortcake and an apple pound cake. And if you see behind OG, I know you may not be able to see his sign, but it says Dodge Viper. You want to yeah, bring yeah. the, you want to pull the sign up so you can see it? That's on my, that's on my list. I'm about to make a strawberry shortcake. Also, a uh, apple pound cake. You should enjoy these recipes. Show you how to make them. Uh, you can make these at home. Uh, and just take heed. Okay. All right. First, I got my cake mix right here. Oh, I need my eggs. Okay. I'm about to make this mix. Add my water. My butter instead of oil, I like butter. I need about uh, nine eggs. Well, you know, I always like baking and I love strawberry shortcake. I mean, who doesn't love a strawberry shortcake? And it's one for the holidays whenever I'm around my family. Yeah, forget it. You know, I'm a professional. I got <laughs> I just told the OG to take it slow. He's moving a little fast. I'm like, yo, you're not at work. You, you're here at yeah. OG's pastries. Oh. Yeah, I'm making my cake mix here. Preheat your oven to uh, 350. So, OG, tell them about uh, your your dreams. What do you what do you? Why are we doing this? What are your dreams? What are you trying to accomplish with what we're doing here? Well, you know, we're trying to establish uh, pastries. Uh, I've been doing this for about forty years, um, and I l actually like baking. I like uh, inventing new ideas, new ingredients, new types of pastries. Um, if someone has a great idea, they can uh, shout out. And we'll we'll hit you off and get back to you. And thank you for the blessing. Well, what you're saying is we can receive super chats, and oh, if you would like, like us to uh, actually create a recipe for you, please uh, super chat us in the live. There, that would be fantastic. And the highest super chat that we get today, OG, next week Saturday around this time again, we'll be baking what you request from us. That's what we'll be doing. No problem. Yeah, come up with something difficult. I'm going to butter my pan. So do me a favor. You, as, you, as you're as you baking, man, can you share a memory of your earliest days baking in North Carolina and how those experiences shaped your style? Uh, okay, my earliest memories of baking in North Carolina... I grew up very poor, and I was always trying to make anything, you know. And one thing about it, I was always curious as to how pastries were made, uh, how do you make a cake, how do you make a Snickers bar. I think that was on my top, in my top five, in my top five. I'm trying to get OG to make sure he talk to y'all in that camera. So that wasn't your top five. How to make a Snickers bar. So you thought about how to make a Snickers bar. That tr intrigued you on how to bake a cake. Just baking, period. Making food. How do they make it? How does it look so conformable? Um, how do they do that? Also, I grew up across the street from a bakery, which kind of helped. You know, my curiosity. Wow. So as a kid, you grew up across the street from a bakery, and that was what triggered the, the desire to start baking? That was one of the triggers uh, because the smell was so delicious. First thing in the morning, I mean, I smelled the fresh, fresh baked bread. It was uh, 
It was incredible. You know, me too. Uh, when I lived in Miami, Florida, I also lived in Panama. My favorite experience is when we used to go by the old bakery shops and the Spanish uh, bakeries, and they were making Cuban bread. Mm. And that and that bread, whoo, that smells so good, bro. Didn't it? I mean, you remember that smell, right? To this day, I still remember that smell. When we lived in Florida recently, a few years ago, I still dug that smell. Do, do you go back there? Yeah, I go back. Oh, I, do I go back there? No, we don't go back around that way because I was in Fort Lauderdale. So, no, we haven't been back there. But Miami smells like Cuban bread in the morning. I'm going to put these two cakes in the freezer for the strawberry shortcake. Then I'll start working on the uh, apple pound cake. Did I say the freezer? Yeah, you said the freezer. You're going to put them in the oven, you say what you mean. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. Take it, take it, take it slow. Take it slow, bro. Take it slow. I know I'm kind of fast. Everybody. You moving fast, yo? He okay. just put the cakes into the oven after yes. he blended them, right? He whipped them up. What are you about to get into now? What are you doing? Now? Uh, okay, at the same time, like this is what you do in baking. Once you start one thing, you have in your mind like a, it's like a time schedule that. Okay, I'm going to start the apples for the apple pound cake. I'm going to saute them, mix them, incorporate them into the uh, cake mix. Also, I'll probably make a streusel uh, to go on top of that. Make it uh, extra. Just a little extra. So now I'm just slicing the apples, getting ready to saute for the uh, apple pound cake. Next, next question. Next question. What led you to the DMV and what were the biggest culinary differences you noticed? And did you notice any culinary differences? Were you here so young that you didn't notice? But if you did, what, were, what did you notice were the culinary differences between uh, North Carolina? Also, you lived in, you was in New Hampshire for a bit. But how long you were there for? You there long? Uh, New England. Georgia. How long you there for? Off, off and on. A year here, two years there when I was yeah. young. Uh, not not, not very, very long. The pastries there, I don't really remember. But I do remember the they had like plums and grapes. The, the food tastes different in, in uh, different areas. Uh, when I moved to North Carolina, it was peaches and apples. Mm. And, uh, blackberries and raspberries. And, you, know, you know, being, being a kid, kid, you could just eat your fill. fill and uh, it's great to be around fresh, fresh, fresh ingredients. Uh, what I know is different about pastries is that uh, in, in the South, they use a lot of grease, like they make sweet potato jacks. A lot of people don't know about those, but if you're from the South, you know about sweet potato jacks. And it's like a sweet potato uh, that's delicious. Very greasy, you know. They don't care about the cholesterol in the South. So, yeah, they don't. They don't care about cholesterol. So you get a really delicious... Also, my grandmother used to make a sweet bread every day when I came home. And uh, I was often curious about how to uh, make the sweet bread. But back then, men were not allowed in the kitchen. So I didn't know until years later. What is a sweet bread? A sweet, sweet bread, bread is like a pound cake. cake. Mm. It's, it's not, not too sweet. sweet. They, she would make me one every day when I came home from school. She's a good woman. She cooked every day. So what you're saying about the differences, it's that hmm, the fruits that were used inside the food, like the, you said. Fresh in the South, you can go pick, pick blackberries and make a blackberry cobbler. Or uh, you could uh, pick a black walnuts and make a black walnut, walnut pound cake. cake. You know, you know uh, uh, as long as you were creative, the, the fresh uh, ingredients, ingredients that you had made the dessert even better. Mm. That sounds crazy, man. That sounds crazy. So we we said the same thing. Oh, uh, somebody requested something online. What was it? A peach cobbler? Blueberry cobbler. Somebody requested a blueberry cobbler. I can do that. Yeah, blueberry cobbler. That's simple. Great, great, man. 
So keep talking to me, man. How was your day today, bro? How was, how was the day? What did you do you know today? It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. day, first of all. Uh, any day on this side of dirt is a great day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just thankful to be here every day. I'm thankful. I wake up. Thank, thank God just for being here. And uh, then I start my day with a lot of positivity. And I try to make people smile, tell a couple jokes here and there, you know, whatever. I'm a, I'm a bald. You, you hate when I say this. You hate when people ask this. Tell us a joke, man. You got all these dang jokes. You got a ton of jokes. Tell me that joke you told me in the car. Oh, the joke I told you in the car? Yeah. Oh, okay. There was a young man. He was on an interview. And the interviewer asked him, can you tell me one character flaw about yourself. And the guy says, uh, it would be honesty. So the interviewer goes, I, I don't think you really understood uh, the question. And he says, I don't give a F what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just try to get a joke out there every now and then because uh, sometimes people are having hard days and Sometimes it helps to just make them laugh, you know, just give a, give a lighter side of whatever the day is about. And uh, I find that that's enlightening. People enjoy it. Sometimes people look forward to me being a comedian. And uh, sometimes I don't realize that I'm a comedian. Sometimes it's hard work after you put the work in and people expect you to come with jokes every day. So that's all in the life. But I thank it. I appreciate people who appreciate me. So. I can't complain. Nice, nice. So, so are there a lot of African American bakers in the industry? I don't, I don't really. I've never seen too many, especially Absolutely. as skilled as you. You're right. There are not a lot of uh, of uh, black uh, pastry chefs or bakers. Uh, a lot of times when I go places, they don't know that it's me until I tell them it's me. And I think they're kind of shocked, and they're like, "You don't look like the kind of guy that would be making cakes, you know." And I said, "Yeah, exactly, but uh, <laughs> it's what I do." So yeah, I don't see a lot of black pastry chefs, um, but it is a great field to be in. I would advise uh, if you want to be a pastry chef, take at least a culinary course, and uh, if you want to be very successful, um, I would advise you go to another country and work for a couple months during the summer because. It makes you more interesting than if you just grew up wherever you're from and you're just looking for a job. But if you went to Japan for the summer or France or, you know, anywhere, just anywhere uh, far away and you work pastry, you know, uh, that makes you more interesting. And, you know, they want to they want to get to know you. And I think they want to have you in their their environment. So it helps to uh, to go somewhere else and, and work like a summer, just a couple of months. And then come back, put that on your resume. I think uh, people will be more interested in uh, bringing you into their establishment. Nice, nice. So has the culinary culture in the DMV area evolved over the years? No, no I, I, I don't think so. Um, but it depends on the quality of wherever it's a fine dining. Maybe it's more French, and they use a lot of chocolates and and uh, liqueurs and things like that. But me, I, I stick to simplicity. I like simple, you know, apple pound cake, uh, apple pie, strawberry shortcake. I'm not into all the fancy desserts, but I can make anything. But uh, if you ask me, I just like plain, regular, regular cake, white icing, you know, nothing fancy. You know, coconut cake, pineapple coconut cake, probably my favorite. You know, I use pineapple juice uh, for the water. And, uh, Dude, I love coconut cake with the coconut, what, like the, the, the sprinkles on the top? Oh, you got to make that next week then. Okay, you want the pineapple coconut? Have you had pineapple coconut? I've never had pineapple and coconut cake pineapple at the same time. Pineapple coconut is a great cake. Now, that's what they have in the South. Simple. But delicious. I'm going to start saving these uh, apples for the pound cake. 
Make that streusel, son. What is a streusel? What exactly does that mean? Streusel goes on the top of like a cobbler. You know, it's just a uh, flour, sugar, cinnamon. What does it do? Is it an accent? Is it the texture? What is it's the texture. texture. For the top of the cake, like a crumb cake. It's a crumb for the top of the cake. It, 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 it makes it kind of better. It gives it the texture of a kind, kind of a better, better flavor. flavor. The crumb kind of brings it out. And I see you just you're just letting that apple just sit. You got that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about yourself? Did you go to culinary school? No, I didn't. I uh, went to a friendship. Um, it's hard to go through apprenticeship because you have to start from ground zero. You have to do everything, and you have to learn every aspect of baking. But when you when you when you've done it that way, you're actually better because you know you know the repercussions of uh, if you make a mistake, you know how to fix it. Uh, also, it makes you very diverse and knowing how to do breads, organic breads, cakes, cookies, French pastries, German pastries. You know, you kind of learn everything. Uh, cakes also. Most pastry chefs, either they know pastries or they know bread. Uh, rarely are you going to find one that knows how to do cakes, breads, organic breads, German pastries, French pastries. But they are out there. We're being asked, what is a 7-Up cake? Have you heard of that? I've heard of the 7-Up cake. cake. It's, uh, a, it's a lot of ingredients. Uh, um, I think it's time consuming, but yeah, there is a recipe out there. If somebody wants me to make that seven up if you request it, and uh, yeah, I have no problem showing you the expertise on that. Yeah, monkey bread is a thing. I thought somebody was being funny, but uh, yeah, I could do that. So, let me ask this question when you're baking classics like strawberry shortcake or apple pound cake. What's a small step or ingredient that makes all the difference? In the, in the pound cake? I would say in the pound cake. Like I gotta melt some more butter. Oh, YouTube's been going fine. I I, I, I like it. It's uh, kind of strange seeing myself, but you know, I'm so pretty. You know, my peers, uh, you know, they're very curious. Uh, they want to see me because uh, I'm just as crazy at work as I am anywhere else. So they look forward to uh, seeing what I have to say and what I'm doing. I have uh, great peers, I gotta admit that. It's always great working with a group of people that appreciate you, and uh, I appreciate them as well. Okay, I'm gonna put the apple. Titles really don't mean anything to me. Uh, I just appreciate doing what I do. I can follow or I can lead. So depending on the circumstance, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just happy to do what I love doing. At work, a lot of people call me chef. But to be honest, uh, you never call the pastry chef chef in most bakeries. You know, yeah, you don't, uh, we don't have that title or thing that we want you to call a chef, you know. But uh, depending on where you work, where I work now, they... They call me chef, you know, and sometimes it shocks me. Cause I go, are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Cakes are rising pretty. I'm going to put the uh, sauteed apple into the pound cake pan. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Take my streusel that I just made. And when the butter melts, there's a secret to a perfect looking pound cake, and I'll show you in a second. I think my best memories are when I made mistakes and I was so afraid that I made a mistake. And then I realized the experts are normally the ones who have made so many mistakes that they can get everything right. And they know the reason why. So that would probably be my best memory. Like, I'm afraid, like, oh, my God, I messed it up. And it just makes you, uh, you should make mistakes because... You learn from your mistakes, and the more you learn, the more you know, the more experience you have. Your mistakes are for a reason. It makes you the expert.
if you don't make any mistakes, you're probably not that good. I'm good because I've made tons of mistakes. So, yeah, now I got it. This is like a two pound pound cake, which is perfect because the wider it is, kind of the better you get more flavor. It bakes it, pounces up. I'm going to show you how to make it pop. You know, when you make a cake and you're like, oh, it's okay, it's good. But you know the ones you see on the on the box and it's split open and yeah. stuff like that. I'm going to show you how to make it pop. Like I remember that. when I learned, I was like so amazed. I'm like, that's it? Yeah. That is it? That's the reason why it does that? So you're going to like it. You know what? I want people to see what I do. If I can teach someone any kind of skill that they want or they can learn from the pastries that I'm making, they're very simple. But you'll see that it's not that big a deal. You could do make some of the most complex pastries. You don't have to be a pastry chef. And uh, some of them are very easy, simple techniques a lot of times. And they probably won't believe you didn't buy it at a bakery or somewhere. So that's, that's what I want to come across, teach people the art of making pastries. And very simple, you know, I don't do techniques that you're going to go, wow, how did he do that? You're just going to be like, I could do that. That's that's what I want to accomplish. Yeah, just a small shop. I want to. What, what country? Brazil. I want to make muffins for the muffins. You know, get up every day, go to my shop. So, so it's not about so it's about the money. It's not about the money. Okay. I mean, we all love money, but it's it's not really about the money. I appreciate making good pastries for people. Yeah, I appreciate you. You you've actually seen me at work. Yeah. In my element. Yeah. And. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of times when you came and you talking to me as I'm working and I didn't realize what I was doing was interesting. And you were just amazed at uh, some of the pastries I was making. So I really appreciate that. Sometimes I forget I'm the pastry chef because it's like work. It's like normal work to me. So it's not like I'm the pastry chef. It's like I'm just making pastries. I don't, I don't like when there's a manager and he has to act like the manager. Uh, I've managed many places, and you, well, you, you would have you, you would have never known I was the manager. He was like, "Who's the guy with the jokes?" Unless some serious topic came up, that's when I would step in. And say, hey, 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 you know, we got to do this. But other than that, just because you're a manager doesn't mean you're smarter than the people who work uh, hey, no, with you. Not. Yeah, so just you know, humble it, humble it. I think I'm really too nice to people at work because making pastries, I mean, how mad can you get, you know? Now, you, you, you crack me up. Yeah, bro. there's no reason to be angry. Sometimes people go, oh, you need to be more stern. I'm like, no, I don't need to be like that. I interact well with people, and uh, someone crosses that line, I have no problem getting a message across. You want to take a look at that, but I think it's not. It's not. No. Okay. No. Okay, yeah, it, it has. All right, let me get the gloves. Protection. Always use protection. Okay, so this is the key to making the pound cake okay, pop. Everybody pay attention. Okay, pay oh, attention oh, to this. Let me remove myself. Okay, it's melted butter. You want to take a plastic scraper or something scraper-like, dip it in the butter, cut it in the middle of the pound cake. That is it. So when it bakes the butter, it, it will spread it open, and you can really taste it. It makes it pop. It'll spread it open. It'll, it'll make it pop from the inside. That's what that's what you want. It's gonna spread it open. It'll give you that look it like the. See, I wake up in the morning. I appreciate it. I wake up in the morning and roar, roar every morning. You, you roar. Yeah, every What's morning. Roar? I'm a Leo. Roar. So it's good to love what you do. You know, especially when you're making pastries, a lot of times you're making people happy. Um, I would probably do this for free if I didn't need money or cars. It's got to be candy apple reds, black leather interior Ooh. with the silver knob with a, with a clutch. I just want it plain red. I don't just I love sports cars. Not because I'm arrogant. It's not because I'm having a, what they call it, midlife. I'm too old for a midlife crisis. You've always had one, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I've always had sport cars. So I just enjoy the power. And, like, when you're in a car like that and you love the car, first of all, if you don't like traffic, buy a better car because everybody should enjoy being in their car. 
regardless of where you're going. But when you, when you have a powerful sports car, it's just a great feeling to drive it on a nice day or to work or to the wherever you're going, even 7-Eleven. I talk to people at the light. I'm like, yo, call me. I used to be a cake decorator at a supermarket. People would come and I'd write happy birthday and talk to them. And there was this lady. She was, uh, I think she was single. She had like three little girls. She would come every week and I would talk to her, maybe give the girls a cookie or something. So she said, you know, the girl's birthday next week. And I said, well, what kind of cake are you going to order? And she said, I'm sorry, I can't order a cake. I don't, I, I can't afford to order a cake. So I told her, look, just come by. I'm going to have something small, something nice for you. And she says, okay. So I remember, and I had to pay for the cake, even though I made the cake, but I wanted to give her something special. They have a three little princess cake that you can order like in the cake books at the supermarkets. And there's a lot of pastel flowers. And she had three little girls and I made her the cake and, um, and I made extra pastel roses on the cake. And when she came to pick up the cake, you know, I gave her the cake and she thought it was going to be something small, like a half sheet cake. And she started crying, you know, and I was like, damn, because, you know, I'm not an emotional person, but I felt emotional because of her reaction to the cake. And I was thinking, wow, it's for the little girl. It's for the kids. You know, so I felt like I was, I felt great because it helped her and it helped me to help her and realize that, yeah, sometimes you could do things for people um, that they really appreciate, you know, and it was just a cake to me, but it seemed like it meant the world to her. Um, if I were like super wealthy, I probably would give away my wealth helping people and doing things like that because uh, because I can, you know, so I mean, what 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 is the uh, the greatest gift? Someone said that how great would the world be if everyone shared their gift with the rest of the world? So I just try to make sure I share my gifts. Do you, do you know who said that? Martin Luther the King. Yeah, share your gift with the rest of the people. Why not? It's a gift, and if you don't share it, you'll lose it. So, you know, if people know me, they, you know, let me just put this out there. I never wanted to be like a better than anybody else. I never wanted to be a great person, you know. Um, I don't think uh, I was the best father or the best husband. But one thing I was probably the best at was being a great friend. So all I wanted to be as a little boy when I grew up was somebody that when he came into the room, you were like, that guy, yeah, that guy, he's here. Okay, we're good, you know, that guy, we can't wait. You got to love what you do and you got to do what you love. Yeah. Let me take this cake out. As the cake's cool in about a couple minutes, we're going to flip them over, put them in the cooler. Oh, we could probably put them in the cooler now. We're going to wait for the uh, pound cake to uh, bake. You know, this is kind of fun, baking and talking. So I like this. I like the YouTube subscribers to get to know me. I'll be doing this like every Saturday. We're going to do a live baking uh, class, cooking or baking something. Um, and you can ask me questions. Uh, you can give me requests. Um, and just ask me any pastry question. Shouldn't be that difficult. I've been around a long time. Or if you want me to make something uh, in my expertise or something that you want to see. I think I got something next week that I really want to make that's kind of different, but I think people can emulate it. And, uh, you know, a lot of these things you can make for Thanksgiving, you know, surprise your relatives or your family, or same thing. But uh, I think it, it will be something that they'll appreciate. Look, bro code, never, you can never, ever date anybody your friend dated or your friend is related to. You can never do that. Broco. That's the bro code. Why would you do that? That's a lowdown bastard. So sometimes you just take the spatula, push the cake in all the way around. And, and show that to them there a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Push the, push the cake all the way around. It comes out, and then you can just turn it over. You know? Oh, yeah. Lot of mercy. Lot of mercy.
Boy, why you leave it upside down? Uh, I'm just gonna cut it. Cut it how? Uh, I gotta cut it in half. Okay. And you gotta trim it. Okay, okay. I'm just. I... I used to work with a Jamaican lady. She was a, she was a pretty good cake decorator. She said, "Lord have mercy," and I would say, "Angela, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy." Yeah, she didn't. She didn't like that. Boy, doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing. Nothing has to be perfect. You'd be surprised how many cakes. But what are you gonna do with that? I'm gonna use this as cake crumb. Ooh, I knew you were gonna do something with it. I knew you was gonna do. That. I just, I, I just had a feeling. Yeah, that's how we do it. Okay, I'm gonna make this cake. I'm gonna cut it in half. Cut that in half. Make the second cake. I'm not just gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna trim the top. So you're cutting this layer for what? Uh, you really when you when you make cakes, they're not even. So you cut the top to try to make it even. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, if you have crumb, which I do, you use that to. Like, you're saying for all this cake, there's no need to throw anything away. And if you're not great at icing your cake, it makes it easier to make the second cake. Mm. So, slice those in half. Bam! 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 Bam. Not a mercy. Lord of mercy. Uh, I do this when I'm working too. I gotta keep this workstation clean. clean up after myself. Yeah, because if, if you see everything in front of you, you're least likely to make a mistake. But now I take, I'm going to make a simple syrup. What I do is that I pre wash these strawberries already. Pre wash the strawberries. People are like, you ain't going to wash those? Yeah, I pre wash them. <laughs> Let them know. Yeah, I like it. Like, you need mustard, strawberry? Yeah, I've washed them. A little high heat. High heat, yeah. And uh, sugar. Now you're going to use about a cup of water and a half cup of sugar. A cup and a half of water and a half cup of sugar. That's about a half a cup. And you cook that for about five minutes. Okay, now it's time to make a whipped cream. Yes, chef. Okay, chef. <laughs> chef, 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 chef. Chef, my ID. Well, you can take a whipped cream if you got a good whisk and you got a good arm and some endurance. And you can whip this for about 10 minutes. It'll turn into heavy whipping cream. Wow, look at that. Oh my god. Can look I... at that. And what is that there? It's just on the stabilizer. Different thing. That's what they like it like. That's why they get what, what that's why they get the video. They like good thing. Well, they get the BBL. Everybody realize it like good thing. <laughs> let's leave the food. Let's leave the food. Do some squats. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need to work out. Just jump rope 15 minutes a man, day. Man, jump rope 15 minutes a day, man. I say it changes your whole life. Hey. Chef, chef, chef. I'm like, oh. Yeah, chef. Yeah, chef. I'm going to say some of that chef then. Let me test the cake. You know how to tell when the cake is ready. How do you tell? Just take a knife like this one. Yeah. Stick it in the center. And if it comes out clean, that means it's ready. Yeah, you can leave it out. You don't have to, uh, give me that cooler. Okay. I was like, <laughs> I said, you may, I, oh, yeah, you don't have to, uh, 
You have to let it cool down. Okay. Because you're just gonna. What you're doing is uh, when you make the strawberry shortcake, the simple syrup is just to make the cake moist. Okay. The cake is just to make the cake moist. Okay. So you enjoy that. That's great. Yeah, that's a good one. Once again, guys, no mix. <laughs> Ram the pot. Oh, yeah, 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 you don't, you don't. Are we supposed to? No, no, I don't need that in here. So you just wash it. Just like that. Just lay it. It's just a boiled strawberry. And sugar. Sugar. Yeah, sugar. Just and sugar. And with water? With water, yeah, just water. Plain water. Plain water. Guys, you, guys, I know you're seeing this. I know you're seeing this strawberry shortcake happen before your eyes. You know, I, one thing about baking that I appreciate most was the hour. And normally, if you're baking, you're baking. Four o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I'm an athlete, so I like to uh, bike ride, play basketball, jog, rollerblade. So, it was only time when I got off work to do all of these other things. Yeah. And I was like, 12, 1 o'clock? Oh my God. I was like a kid. Yeah. 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 How do you suggest we uh, a person serve or a process if they plate the pound cake or the strawberry? I would let the strawberry cake sit, put it in the refrigerator, maybe like an hour. We'll get a little firm and then you cut it uh, for your guests. So we don't have too many guests because you're not going to want to share it with everybody. What's a lot? What's a lot? Oh, hell yeah. I'm gonna come back next week, man. Same time. Yeah. About almost. Okay, who's got who's slicing the cake?
All right, let's take the one right here. Okay, guys, we're all about to take a bite. We're all about to take a bite. Here we go. Like, mm. Mm. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Now be laughing. How good this is. Mm. 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 I'm just, I'm just, mm. <laughs> without ice cream, it didn't even need ice cream because it's whipped cream. Oh, you took that off. Thank you, everybody. We out. Thank you.